WT student athletes drink low fat chocolate milk post workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low fat chocolate milk to your post workout routine. Bird Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guide you every step of the way. That is the Jay Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call Jay Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are Jay Ferg Roofing. We are more. Well, welcome back to the First United Bank Center, where we're getting ready for the 11th ranked West Texas A&M Buffaloes to host the Patriots of the University of Texas, Tyler. The Buffs come into this afternoon's game 15-2 and two overall, 2-1 two and one in Lone Star Conference play. The Patriots, they're not too shabby themselves. 9-1, and one, they are 1-0 oh in LAC play. The Buffs opened LSC play with a loss at Arkansas Fort Smith, but have since rebounded with three straight conference wins, including Thursday night's 79-69 win over Texas A&M Commerce. The Buffs lead the Lone Star Conference in rebounding, of all things, 40.5 rebounds a game, and they're 11-0 at the FUB this year. Their opponent today, the Patriots of UT Tyler. As I say, 9-1 overall. Their only loss also was to Arkansas Fort Smith. They're 2-0 on the road. They're undefeated away from their home campus in Tyler, Texas. Sometimes they have trouble holding on to the basketball. They average 15.6 turnovers a game. Their schedule hasn't been that tested, but they have two victories over Dallas Baptist. So Lucas, this is a Patriot team that likes to get up and down the court. This is a Buffaloes team, which as opposed to years past, seems yeah. to be just as comfortable in the half court game as it is the running game. And they are, and can they continue to play great defense. They held Texas A&M Commerce under 70 points in the win on Thursday, 79 to 69. And we're seeing guys step up their play. You know, Zach Toussaint led the way with scoring 20 points on Thursday. But one of the things that Tom Brown was uh, so proud of for Zach was he said he kind of had to play the point guard for us a little bit. Did a nice job distributing the ball as well. Had four assists. They got a great game from Larry Wise. Also, you were able to visit with him post game. And uh, for the Buffaloes, one other guy that is starting to step up his game is Addison Wallace. So. A lot of different contributions. They don't count on just one guy to get the job done. And collectively, again, as a team, their defense is strong. You mentioned Addison Wallace. Success on the floor is all about confidence, and he's gaining it as we go. Overall this season, his numbers aren't that impressive. 5.7 points, 4.5 rebounds. But in LSC play, he's nearly doubled both of those. 11.5 points, 7 rebounds a game. He had 11 points Thursday night against A&M Commerce. He had 14.7 boards a week ago at Oklahoma Christian. We're going to be without the services of Julius Brown again tonight. He's being held out because of medical reasons. That means the point guard duties again yeah. fall on Zach Tucson. And with Zach being the ball handler, Lucas, that kind of changes the role that he plays on the floor. It does. He was still able to find some three-point baskets the other night in the win over Commerce. But, again, he's putting it on the floor more. His other teammates are kind of doing uh, some different things. One of the big differences is the buffs. Without Julius Brown, they're just not as fast. Julius gets the outlet, and he's down the court in a hurry. So that changes some things. Look for a, a couple of the players inside, though, to have a big game today for the Buffaloes. Kevon Booker, one of those players. Dalen Williams, he was strong the other night as well. I'm excited to see this UT Tower team, though. Their head coach, Lewis Wilson, third season here uh, at UT Tower, and he's a winner. You go back to when he was a head coach at Adams State, KJ, three appearances in the NCAA tournament with the Grizzlies. So he knows how to win, and he's trying to bring that uh, winning style to UT Tyler. The only time these teams have ever played previously was back February 20 of 2020, just about two weeks before COVID shut us yeah. down. Buffs won 73 to 62 at the Harrington Center in Tyler, Texas. We're going to take a one-minute timeout when we come back. We'll have the starting lineup and get this game underway. 
You're watching Buffalo Basketball on the LSC Digital Network. 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. When you choose natural gas... Chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. Let's meet the starting lineup for tonight's game. First, our visitors from Tyler, Texas, the Patriots of UT Tyler in their third season. Under head coach Lewis Wilson, the start of one guard, Jackson Edelmeyer, 6'3 junior from Rexburg, Idaho. Edelmeyer averages 7.8 points, three rebounds a game. The second guard, Micah Fuller, 6'1", graduate student from Bessemer, Alabama. Fuller averages 12.8 points, 3.1 rebounds. He is the LSC's free throw percentage leader, as well as standing second in the conference in steals. The third guard, Solomon Thomas, 5'10", senior from Kansas City, Missouri. Thomas averages 7 points, 1.7 rebounds. The forwards... Patrick Samura, 6'6", sophomore from Maroon, Czech Republic. Samura averages 5.3 points, 2.5 rebounds. Running out the starting five, Melan Sabo, 6'10", junior from Levis, Slovakia. He averages 9 points, 6.7 rebounds. As a team, the Patriots average 81.5 points a game. They're allowing just 62, and they're out-rebounding their opponents, 37 rebounds to 29. For the Buffaloes, 15-2 overall, 2-1 in Lone Star Conference play, ranked 11th in the most recent NABC poll. They're in their eighth season under head coach Tom Brown. They'll start the five-guard lineup. Kavon Booker, 6'6", sophomore from Shirts, averaging 8.2 points, six rebounds a game. He's got 17 blocks this season. The point guard today, Zach Tucson, 5'11", sophomore from Johnsburg, Illinois. Tucson averages 14.9 points, 2.3 rebounds. He is currently tied with Jordan Evans for sixth all-time in the WT three-point made category. Found a little snap for you there, Lucas. Yeah, that's impressive. The third guard, Hayden Blankley, 6'6", sophomore from Sydney, Australia. Blankley averages 6.5 points, 5.3 rebounds. The fourth guard, Addison Wallace, 6'3", sophomore from Cleveland, Texas. Addison averages 5.5 points, 4.6 rebounds. And rounding out the starting five, sophomore from Oxahatchee, standing 6'4", Larry Wise, 13.9 points, 4.5 rebounds. He had 19 points Thursday against Texas A&M Commerce and has three 20-plus scoring outings this season. Our officiating crew, Darren Griffin, Daniel Schaefer, and Anthony Thomas. And part of the reason for our delay in the game getting started this afternoon was that Schaefer and Thomas were en route to Canyon from Dallas earlier today. They got as far as Childress and ran into car troubles. So one thing led to another, and it turns out that a former graduate assistant coach for the Buffs basketball program back in the Rick Cooper era lives in Childress and was able to obtain transportation to get Schaefer and Thomas here. So we're about 30 minutes late getting underway, but we're ready to go. Darren Griffin, our lead official out there with Kavon Booker. It's like, hey, I know a guy in Childress, right? Just got to get the job done sometimes, KJ. And Booker gets the tip to Tucson, who immediately launches a three. It doesn't go, but Booker gets the offensive board and has the ball stripped away. Quickly, we go the other way. Edelmayer brings it down to the baseline. Kicks it in the corner to Fuller. 
Now they'll set up the half-court game. Patriots in the bright orange with the blue trim and numerals. The Buffs in the white Under Armors with the maroon West Texas and numerals. And we've got a foul inside as Sabo takes it to the rack. Coming in with the foul is going to be Addison Wallace. His first, the team's first. That's going to send Mion and Sabo to the line, shooting twice. He's a 72 percenter on the season. And Sabo, all of 6'10". You know, the Division II level, not many players that we see that this size and so stands out. Yeah, a lot of times your fives are 6'7", uh, 6'8". Six, six, he makes them both. And the Patriots take an early 2-0 lead. Just underway here in Canyon, Texas. Wise to Tucson. Tucson triple team gets it back to Wise. Very active man defense as Wise slips down. And we're going to have a call. Daniel Schaefer said he didn't slip. He was pushed. And this foul will go against Sabo. His first, the Patriots first. Buffs to inbound to the left of their bucket. Wise to get it in. Goes deep to Wallace. The ball tipped in the backboard by Fuller. Wallace tracks it down. Eight on the shot clock. Here's Wise to Tucson. Quick three, short. Wise with the rebound. Gives it to Wallace. Kicks in the corner to Blankley. His three knocks it down. That's what Tom Brown talked to us about on Thursday was he said, Hayden's just got to be ready. He said he's a good shooter, but sometimes doesn't get the feet set. That time he was, and he was on target. His big outing was seven out of nine from three-point range over in Portales against Eastern New Mexico December 2nd. Going to have a reach foul. Yeah, they get Blankley. This goes on Hayden. His first, Buffs second. Non-shooting foul. Thomas to inbound for the Patriots to the left of their bucket, guarded by Cameron Bell. Bell fronts him. Thomas gets it in deep to Samora. Passing around the perimeter. Now Sabo up top, goes right side to Edelmeyer. Shot clock at eight. Samora to Sabo, works on Wallace. Booker comes in, he goes over two buffs. Misses the shot, and Kavon comes down with the ball. That's good help defense by Kavon. They're going to need him going against that size. Patriots doing a good job denying the inlet pass. Wise long three, no good. Cameron Bell comes up with the loose tip. That's the third offensive rebound thus far for the Buffs. Booker trying to drive on Sabo. Kicks it out to Bell. Shot clock at six. Wise inside the mm. Bucker with the reverse. Oh, baby. Well, that was an incredible play. First the pass from Larry Wise. He fired it in there. Kavon got his body turned and had to dunk that thing backwards. I like the way you said that he had to dunk Yeah, he had to. You and I, you would have to regain your feet and turn around. Not Kavon. Oh. Some style points there for KB. Have a uh, foul called on Cameron Bell at the other end. That will be Cam's first. Team foul number three against the Buffaloes. Paul Joko, 6'4", junior from Strasbourg, France to inbound. This Patriots team, like the women's team, has an international flavor and got a moving screen inside. Larry Wallace, the recipient of it, but is the Patriots player who got the worst of us. Yeah, coming up hobbling is the player they called the foul on. Finn Fluta, sophomore from Essen, Germany. He's not able to put any weight on that left foot. Hopefully he's okay. It was one thing I've noticed in the first several possessions here for UT Tyler. When they screen, they are very physical with their screens. They are a big team. Yes, they are. But you got to make sure you're set. The officials obviously look for that. 6'10 and a 6'8. Yeah, they're using their length right now to try and trap. They're pulling Sabo up high. Here is Bell on the wing. Gets it to Aweezy. Jesse Aweezy jumper, and he's going to be called for the charge. 
and, and that's when Jesse has gotten in trouble just showing a little bit of his youth. The defense was already set. If he stops and just raises up and takes a jump shot, there's no foul there, but tries to bull his way through the defense, and that's a charge. Fine line to be between being aggressive and yeah. being patient. Yep, and that's just that comes with experience. He'll learn that. He's a talented young man. And they need him today. They need him to stay out of foul trouble and stay on the court to help out with this big lineup. They've got him at the five right now. We'll call him a guard, but he's at the five. The five guard. Sabo, he's left alone. Missed everything. Rebound comes down to wide. Larry pulls it out. Thought about going base Ooh, high. Look at this tight defense out there. From Joku. Here's Parker Nielsen. Up top to Wise. Shot clock at 15. Wise on the wing. Lobs to Aweezy. Jesse backs in. Ooh. Ooh. Turn around. Up and in. Yeah, I don't know how he saw Parker Nielsen. His back was to the basket. Parker made the cut. That was a beautiful play from Aweezy to Parker Nielsen. Let's see if we look, have a look at this one. Talk about eyes in the back of your head, right? The teacher used to say that. I've got eyes in the back of my head. Well, so does Jesse Aweezy. Look go. at this. Yep. Starts to back down on Mateen, and there's Parker on the cut. Wow. Timeout on the floor, 16-27 to play in the first. Buffs by five. You're watching Buffalo Basketball on the LSC Digital Network. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. The Buffalo's on a 7-0 run over the last two minutes and 22 seconds. So UT Tyler scores first, and then the Buffs score the next seven points, playing strong defense and some good passing so far for the Buffaloes. They already have three assists. On, West Texas on three field goals. Yeah. Yeah, you got to like that. And the Buffs have held UT Tyler scoreless from the field over the first three and a half minutes. UT Tyler's two points coming from the free throw line. Buffs out rebounding. UT Tyler does not have a rebound yet. Well, we're talking about their height. We're talking about their aggressive defense. And the Buffs, yeah. on paper and on the board, have the game. And they're a much smaller team, WT is we're today. We're used to that. I, you know, I was commenting one of our uh, fans before the game, watching UT Tyler warm up, and said, I've gotten used to over, to over the past eight years knowing that our team's shorter than what the <laughs> opponents are. But it never matters. That was a good bucket inside for UT Tyler. Good answer. Yeah, that was Eson Wiley. With the bucket, here's Wise. It's a two-pointer. Nope, call it a three. And, and that's the gamble for the Patriots. They're trapping, they're flying everywhere, drawing two defenders at the ball. But what happens is they leave a wide-open three-point shooter. That was the wrong guy to leave open, Larry Wise. Yeah, he's knocked down 31 this year. You think of him playing that baseline, but he can hit from outside. Here's a drive by Mateen. Oh, Oh, they're going to call the block. I don't know Just about that one. A Wheezy looked like he was trying to get out of the way. He had, he had slid over and helped position, but they Just catch him with the foul. Here's a look at it. Good drive. That's a tough one. That was a nudge. Boy, 15 foul against the Buffs. It's going to get, get Wallace and, and Kavon Booker back in for Blankley and a Wheezy, Quincy Henderson. Goes over and talks to, to Jesse on the side. What a luxury on the bench Kent, for uh, both Quincy Henderson and Chris Gove, two of the best assistant coaches in the country. And they have been with the Buffs since Tom got here eight years ago, and that is unusual. Yeah. A timeout was called before uh, the player, Joku, fell out of bounds, so a smart play there by uh, the young man. We'll keep it right here, just a 30-second timeout. You were talking about Larry Wise, uh, Kent hitting that three. It was neat seeing him uh, up here. You get, got a chance to interview him the other night. Soft-spoken, very humble, 
and uh, again a transfer from the University of North Texas, and he seems to have fit in very quickly. At, at North Texas, our understanding is that he uh, he battled uh, some health issues, didn't get an opportunity to to, to play uh, due to that. Saw an opportunity to play up here because Lord knows our roster was wide open last summer, and. I mean, you, you, you talk about thinking it's going to be dark and bleak and the sun coming up the next day when, when we heard that Quay and JoJo oh, and yeah. Janelle and we're going to leave. Like, how thought, are we going to replace these guys? It's going to be a rebuilding year. Let's give them a year or two. Lo and behold, here comes Larry Wise and Addison Wallace. and Juju. Ju 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 yeah, Julius Brown and Jesse Oweezy. And, and, hey, they pick up where they left off. That's the uh, benefit of having an established program is that uh, kids want to play for you. Patriots basketball, Buffs leading 10-5, just under 15 and a half to play here in the first. It's Thomas for three, short. Wise with the rebound. It's his third rebound already. Wallace up top. Puts it on the ground to Booker. Booker wants to take it to Sabo. Has the ball stripped away. Nielsen picks up the loose ball. Can't get the shot to fall. You can tell when Kavon catches it on the three-point line, he feels like he has the quickness advantage uh, against the defender Sabo, so he's trying to take it to the rack. Speaking of taking it to the rack, Paul Joko. Booker says no, sir, at the other end. Wise with the lay-in. Defense yeah. creating offense. Fast break opportunity there for the Buffs. They are so good in transition. 18th block of the year for Kavon. That one should have counted for two or three. Good double Wiley, team. Double team by Bell and Nielsen. Ball on the floor. Jump ball. Patriots basketball in alternating possession. It's one of those defensive plays that gets the bench all fired up. It was a strong double team, suffocating the ball. Now the Buffs substitute Dalen Williams into the game. So we got Williams and Booker inside. Williams replacing Iweezy. And it's Watch trapped. The double team How do you here. get out of that? The ball's loose there. Good hustle. But Wiley managed to keep his hands on the ball. When Nielsen went down, that forced the alternating possession. Here's Fuller, four on the shot clock. Drives, puts it up, no good. Wise with oh, the rebound. He got fouled. I thought they were going to call it travel. Yeah, Fuller grabbed the arm, and that led to the steps. Micah Fuller picking up his first, team's third. That last offensive play, Kavon affects the shot. Doesn't block it, but affects it, and it's similar to what we saw Thursday in Clayshawn Gaffney, right? Offensively, these players going at the Commerce big man, and altering their shot because they're afraid of getting it blocked. Same thing. Wallace strong to the rack. Yeah, if you're active defensively, the offense has to respect what you can do, and sometimes they anticipate and change their normal course of action. Here's Edelmeyer. Yeah, Dalen turned Williams. Around, no good. We've got a whistle underneath. Oh, they got him in the brush. They're going to call a foul against Addison. That was good interior defense by Dalen Williams. He just did the same thing that we were talking about Kavon doing. Wallace guilty of his second. The Buffs in some foul trouble, KJ. It's a couple players that already have two fouls. Wallace and Wise head to the bench. Nielsen and Blakely, Blankley back in the uh, lineup for the Buffs. Thomas gets it in deep. Foyta back in the game for the Patriots, so that's good. He went out with that ankle injury earlier. Baseline drive, Samora cut off by Booker. Shot clock at eight. Mateen, long three, hits it. Wow. Zaire Mateen from Queens, New York. Knocks it down from long distance. Tough break the press. Leading by six. Travel. That's what this pressure does. It speeds you up. And so you catch the ball, and you see someone coming, and you take off, and your feet shuffle. That's what happened there with Kavon. And that's exactly what UT Tyler wants to do with this trapping defense. And you're seeing a lot of subs come in and out. That's because they want to keep them fresh. 
14-8, approaching the 13-minute mark of the first. Defense has been solid for UT Tower. The problem is they're 2 of 7 from the field, shooting 28%. Well, a lot of that's been the defense the Buffs have been playing. Little floater, no good. Ball batted around. Williams comes up with it. Tries to pass ahead to Tucson. A little too far. Micah Fuller comes up with it. And Fuller passes to Mateen, and Mateen gets ahead of himself and walks. Going to get Cameron Bell in for Tucson. Just watching Tucson early in the game. Kent doesn't seem to be himself. He, on that last play, Williams threw it ahead, and Zach normally tracks that ball down. He may not, may not be completely uh, feeling himself today. Now, we were told earlier in the day that uh, Tucson was a little bit under the weather. Sometimes you uh, play your best games when you go that way. Well, we know he's a competitor. Oh, so he wasn't going to be held out. No. There's Blankley to Bell. Cameron drives. Little floater. Short. Blankley gets in there, takes the rebound, and then has it stripped away. <laughs> Loose on the floor. Buffalo's basketball. The play of Cameron Bell yeah. and yeah. Parker Nielsen in the first six minutes of this game, two people who uh, normally come off the bench as they have today, but they have really injected some, some energy into this lineup. Yeah, when your numbers call, be ready to go. They have today. Wise has the ball picked off, but as Jackson Edelmeyer takes the ball, he steps out of bounds. Lewis Wilson not happy with the call, having a little discussion with Derek Griffin. He thought he was fouled. But quick hands from Edelmeyer. I mean, Larry didn't even know what had happened, and Edelmeyer had the ball. This is a quick Patriots team. Yes, it is. Especially on defense. Four seconds. Shot clock and far. Wise spins, loses the ball. It's a turnover. Patriots trailing by six, 14 to eight, inside of 12 to play here in the first. Here's Edelmeyer back outside, Mateen. Right wing now, Fuller. Pulls up from 16, no good. Blankley tracks down the ball in the corner. Here's Wise. Oh, he's having trouble with the handle on the ball right now. They're using that old Harlem Globetrotters ball that sticks to the floor. Wise gets a screen from Williams, uses it, puts up the three, two strong. Strong rebound by Fluta. This defense for the Patriots, impressive. It's a scoring drought of nearly three minutes for the Buffaloes. Fluta with the mid-range, no good. Blankley with the rebound. Then again, the Buffs have only allowed eight points in the first nine yeah. minutes. Both sides. Nielsen spins, floats, can't get it to go. Aggressive move by Parker. In the corner, three, Edelmeyer knocks it down. 14 to 11, Buffaloes. Each team has made two threes so far. Buffs have three turnovers in the last three and a half minutes. Very unlike them. Bell drives. Oh. It's going to be a foul on the floor. Anthony yep. Thomas with the call. Some muscle from Cameron Bell there. Foul's called against Micah Fuller. That will be his second. Fourth team foul against the Patriots. Yeah, Tom Brown, let's look at this one. He thinks this, this should have been an and one. And I don't know if <laughs> I agree with him there. Timeout on the floor, 10-15 to play in the first. West Texas leads it 14-11. You're watching Buffalo basketball on the LSC Digital Network. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, 
This is the Lone Star Conference. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Welcome back to Canyon, Texas. A low-scoring, tough defensive game so far today between the Buffaloes of West Texas A&M and the Patriots of UT Tyler. WT shooting 46% from the field, 6 of 13, while the Patriots are 3 for 11. Each team a couple of threes. Buffs ball. Bell on the inbound to Wise. Tucson is the Tyler Bench Hill shooter. Shoots the ball and yep. hits nothing but twine. Good to see Zach back on the floor and good to see the ball going through the net. Amazing how that happens. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lob in. Look who comes up with it. Parker Nielsen. Good steal. He is growing up quick. Remember last year, he earned some starts mm -hmm. late in the season as a true freshman. Wise to Nielsen. Down on the block to Booker. Goes oh, up. Wow. He went up with Sabo. And Sabo got a hand on the ball, and at the other end, nobody's down there. Good hustle from Sabo. Well, nobody was down there yeah. because Booker was flat on the ground at the other end. Yep. Point game, 16-13 Buffaloes. Nielsen hesitates, takes it to the rack. Yeah, nobody came over, and we know he can elevate, and Parker flushes it home. He went up against Sabo, took it to him. 18-13 Buffs, nine to play in the first. Lob inside to Sabo. Booker gets it, loses his balance, and falls out of bounds. Good hustle. By Kavon. Sloppy pass. Let's go back to that last play. Parker Nielsen coming at you. The fake, no help. The fake got Sabo taking a step out, and that let Nielsen get by him. And in this game, you're going into the paint. You better come strong just like he did. Sabo heads to the bench. Gamesmanship down there with Kavon Booker. Replaced by Kyle Freelo. And Freelo. 6'8 freshman from Los Angeles. Another big body. Here's Freelo inside. Blocked by Booker. Controlled by Nielsen. Here come the Buffs. Bell for three. Can't get it to go. Nielsen is blankly. Tries to keep the ball alive. And I think they're going to have Hayden coming over the back. Yeah, that, that's the right call. Hayden crashed in. Did not have position that time. So it is going to go back to UT Tyler. That's the seventh team foul against the Buffaloes. So we'll go to the other end of the floor. Some scores from around the Lone Star Conference. Lubbock Christian, number one team in the country, leads Oklahoma Christian 61-34. They just wow. continue to put it on opponents. Uh, Midwestern State at home at halftime. Trails St. Mary's 29-21. The Rattlers lead. And the Buffs see the Rattlers this coming Saturday. That's right. It was a really close game at the Berg Center as that first free throw is good for the Patriots. DBU defeats St. Ed's 77-73. Dallas Baptist, a new look team. They do not have uh, Chandler Jacobs, yeah, an all-American player. That The Buffs this week will make the road trip to Austin and San Antonio to play St. Ed's and St. Mary's. Bison Wiley at the line, knocks them both down, makes it 18-15. Here's Tucson from 18, got it. And he knew it as soon as he came down. He was backpedaling. Four points for Zach. Buffs lead back to five as we approach eight to play in the first. Joko in the paint, gets a roll. Twenty to seventeen, Buffaloes. Lob inside. Nielsen one times it. 
Wow. And they're getting outstanding production from Parker Nielsen today. This is six points, takes the lob from yeah. Booker, and a turnover. So this is where the Patriots have got to be careful. It's just a five-point lead right now, but the crowd's getting into it, and this is where the Buffs can go on a run. Before we take a break, let's watch that last lob from Kavon to Nielsen. Yeah, great communication and a great finish. Good pass from Kavon as well. 7.38 to play. Buffs up 22-17. You're watching WT Basketball on the LSC Digital Network. We are Carpet Tech. We are family. More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. I told you the crowd was getting into it, Kent Johnson. This is the second time that this has happened during the timeouts. From one end of the floor to the other, you got to put the golf ball all the way down into the hole, and it goes in. And so the winner gets. I think it's steak for a year. Steaks for a year. of our friends at Canyon Ranch. I don't know. Who, I don't know who the young lady is that just won that, but. Kent Meredith Johnson, Jameson, Lucas, Kent. Yeah, we love a putter for you. <laughs> we, we love steaks. If you want to share, Buffs first half shooting 10 of 19, 52 percent from the floor. UT Tyler five of 14, 35 percent. Both teams have knocked down a pair of free throws. Buffs had or a pair of three pointers. Buffs have not gone to the line in the first 13 minutes of this game. It's Whist about to change. Whistled up a foul that went against Edelmeyer. For Jackson Edelmeyer, his first, the team's fifth. Zach Tucson at the line. Shooting twice. It'll be the first time the Buffs have been to the line. And it hasn't been because they haven't got the ball in the paint. Yeah. Again, the Buffs, Thursday night, a win over a very strong Texas A&M Commerce team. UT Tyler had a little R&R &R as Cameron is under COVID protocols, so no game up in law. And Solomon Thomas tries to turn the corner, and we've got a reach-in foul. This goes against Parker Nielsen for his first. If you're the Patriots, can't they? Make your free throws because, I mean, they're shooting bonus the rest of the way. It's 7-19 still to play. As a team, they're 76% 70 on the year. Thomas a perfect now 13 of 13 from the line. Jab step by Larry Wise, and he gets the reach-in foul on Patrick Samora. That's Samora's first. The Patriots' sixth. Toussaint with four points, actually six points. Two field goals and a pair of free throws. Past Quay Grant in the three-point list Thursday night is tied with Jordan Evans for six. Jay Smooth. The list. That's... We have seen a lot of good three-point shooters over the past eight years. Jay Smooth. <laughs> he had a great visit with him yes. back on Alumni Day. Coaching uh, down in Florida at one of the uh, academies. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, wasn't it? Yes. There's a three missed by Tucson. Quick outlet down court to Edelmeyer. Takes it in and beats Tucson one. There's some athleticism on display. Jackson Edelmeyer, originally from Rexburg, Idaho, a transfer from Idaho State. Wise turns left, goes right, misses. Three pointer, Solomon Thomas, no good, and a push inside on Samora. I think they ring up number 20 here. Yes. That's who it is. 
Samora's second. Team foul number seven against the Patriots. Yeah, you'll see just a little bit of push off underneath. All right call from the official. We'll Cameron see Bell, Addison Wallace, Dalen Williams return to the Buffs lineup. New face in the game, Jonas Carlisle, the freshman from San Antonio. Official stops play and uh, goes over to the scores table. Yeah, that last foul was their seventh, so the Buffs should be shooting one and one. Okay. A little confusion down on the floor. I wasn't going to say it because I figured that they knew what was going on. That'll send Wise to the line, 89% shooter on the year. They'll shoot twice. Buffs currently up three, and let's make it four. Buffs only had one player inside there to rebound that time, and everybody was looking at Addison Wallace, but smart play by Wallace. He said, I can't go in there. I can't afford to pick up a third foul, guys. <laughs> There's no rebound to be had anyway. Larry makes them both. He has seven. The Buffs have 26 to Tyler's 21. 6.20 to play in the first. There's Wiley on the baseline. Tries to back in on Carlisle, goes down. They're going to say that Carlisle probably gave him a hip. He did, and the problem was his feet stopped moving. Carlisle had the body and was nearly step for step with the offensive player, but that time Wiley turn, starts to turn the corner. Here, here you look at it again, your feet stop and just a little bit of the leg catches Wiley and he'll go to uh, the free throw line, 6'5", grad transfer from William Jewell, a place we've been. Beautiful campus. Near the Kansas, Kansas City area. City, yeah. yeah. In fact, Kent, that was the trip. Enjoy the barbecue. Where it was the absolute best barbecue. <laughs> Arthur Bryant. Yeah, I mean, everybody says it. Oh, Kansas City has the best barbecue. Yes, yes, they do. There are some good spots in Texas, too. But uh, Okay, we're, we're getting a disagreement here from our director. We'll have to talk to Jacob Griffin about. And he's from Kansas, so he knows, he knows his barbecue. Wiley. Makes them both. He has six, and it's back to a three-point Buffalo lead. There's Carlisle, brings it out to Wallace. You know, you look at the five buffs on the floor, and Cameron Bell's basically your ball handler, and he hasn't touched the ball this possession. Now he does. Good fake. Pump fake. Feeds Wallace, who goes up double team blocked, goes up again, and Oof. misses. Actually, that was Kevon Booker under there. You talk about the trees inside and not being able to score over the top. And we've got a charge. Called against Solomon Thomas. His first. Some of those mistakes that have really been hurting the Patriots. It was a great defensive possession. Then they come down and they don't get a chance. Here's Toussaint open for three. It's in and out and a good rebound. But the Patriots have got to stop some of these illegal screen calls and some plays like that, not getting a chance to get a shot off. Here's Mateen. Kicks it back out. When you say Mateen, Kent, I think of Mateen Cleaves, right? Of course, last name, first name, but. You're thinking of Sydney. <laughs> yeah. He of basketball card. Fame. Well, M Mateen Cleaves, I remember, I'll never forget because uh, the talented Michigan State guard and one of the years that the Oklahoma Sooners had a talented team, they got knocked out, and it was from Mateen Cleaves and the Michigan State Spartans. Offensive foul on Thomas. Another second. one. That's the ninth team foul against. The Patriots and the officials huddling up, having a little discussion here. I'm trying to decide if it's a shooting foul or not. Well, it should be one and one, unless it was a charge. If it's a charge, that's player control, but they obviously did not call it. And, and right now, Lewis Wilson, he, he's getting frustrated, head coach for the Patriots. He's, he's seen enough of these illegal screens in his mind. It's stopping the flow for UT Tyler. Wise misses the front end. 
And the Buffs lead stays at three, 26-23, as we approach five minutes to play here in the first. Wiley on the wing, go the other side to Mateen. Kicks it up top to Thomas. Fluta. Seven on the shot clock. They get it inside to Wiley. His turnaround, no good. Ball knocked out of bounds. Buffs basketball. And they got a shot off that time, but that's a difficult shot. I mean, it's a turnaround, tough kind two of a point. Fadeaway. Mm -hmm, contested. So, again, credit the Buffs defense. Here we are. This has just been two very solid defensive teams in this first half today. Bell Yikes. Tries to hit two song break in the press and airmailed it. Turnover for the Buffs, number six. They have forced six Patriot turnovers. Buffs, three minutes and 15 seconds without a field goal. Juco down low, spin by Wiley. Finds Fluta coming across. Oh, wow. There's Booker with the block, and he gets the rebound. Tucson takes it down the lane, draws the foul. That's an impressive play for Zach just to even get the shot off. Number 13. Fluta guilty of the foul. The second team's 10. Tucson to the line shooting twice, and over the final 4.08, both teams will be shooting twice on a foul. Tucson can't get the first one to go. Fluta is 6'10". Here's why it's so impressive just to get the shot off. He's 6'10". Zach is 5'10". And he didn't get the shot blocked. He was able to hang. He and, got it up there. Yeah, and draw the foul. Rare miss free throw, though, for Tucson. Knocks down the second. Heads to the bench is Torian Harris. 6'6 freshman from Rowlett. Played last year, but gets the year back. Averaging two and a half points. So when you do that, when you, you're a freshman last year, but COVID, you get the freshman again, do they still make the freshman do all the stuff behind the scenes? <laughs> hey, the pink pack pack like, wait, hey, I'm a second year guy. No, you're still listed as a freshman. Go get the laundry. Parker Nielsen picks up his second personal. Full timeout on the floor, 3.54 to play in the first. Buffs lead at 27-23, and there you see the block. Nielsen just rode them back along the baseline. You're watching Buffalo basketball on the LSC Digital Network. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. Nearing the halftime, still 3.54 left to play in the first half, and West Texas A&M leads by four points, 27-23 your score. Buffalo's no field goals over the last three minutes and 52 seconds. UT Tyler in a scoring drought of two minutes and 20 seconds. Mentioned it, great defense being played by both teams. The Buffaloes have three shot blocks thanks to Kevon Booker. UT Tyler with one shot block. Each side has forced six turnovers. Rebounds, Buffs out-rebounding the Patriots 17 to 11. Right now the Patriots are going to go back to the free throw line where they have been very good in the first half, 9 out of 10 from the charity stripe. And Eason Wiley has got a chance to add to those totals. And he does. Puts it back to a three-point game at 27-24. Has another shot coming his way. Makes them both. You know, their last game for UT Tyler, a 69-68 win over Midwestern State. They trailed the entire game, took the lead with two threes in the final minute to win it. Here's Book. 
Booker up top. Buffs leading 27-25. Booker, he's going to drive. Little floater won't go. Buffs have gone cold from the field. In fact, both teams have. Buffs scoreless over the last four minutes. The Patriots scoreless over the last three and a half from the field. There's another miss. There's a lot of those layups that have just come off yeah. for UT Tyler. Tucson. Yep. Up top, we've got a legal screen called against Kevon Booker. Yeah, that's the same call they've been getting on the other side against UT Tyler. That's Booker's first. And uh, you know, I'm wondering what head coach Lewis Wilson is, is questioning right now because he, he got the call. That was the right one. Talking to Darren Griffin. That'll be a player control foul with the moving screen. You know, officials, one of the jobs, Kent, listening skills, right? Got to be up at the top because they hear a lot during Right up there with uh, school counselors. Huh? <laughs> right. Tell me about your problems. You, you listen and you don't say much. <laughs> There's a miss, but an offensive board for the Patriots. Nice feed. Put back by Thomas, no good, but he'll go to the line. Number 12, Dalen Williams. Dalen Williams picks up his first personal. That'll send Solomon Thomas to the line, shooting twice. UT Tyler, they've tried a lot uh, to score the ball inside, but you look at the stat sheet, only six points scored in the paint for the Patriots. What they have uh, gotten today is good production off the bench as they have 13 points scored off the bench today. And they got a chance to tie it if this free throw uh, is good for Thomas. And they have. Patriots 13 of 14 from the line today. Buffs 5 of 7. Here's Tucson to Wise at the free throw line. Larry knocks it down, whistle, counted, and won. Great concentration from Larry. He just, just gets nicked on the bottom of his wrist, at the top, top of his wrist, follows through, hits the shot. Jackson Edelmeyer picks up his second personal. Wise goes to the line for the and one. As Wiese and Blankley check in, replacing Nielsen and Harris. Buffs lead it, 29-27, 2.35 to play in the first. Wise bonus shot is good. Larry has 10. To go with five rebounds to this point. Edelmeyer on the way. Up top to Joko. Fluda. Shot clock at eight. Thomas gets around wise, goes up. Shot's blocked. Re rebound comes down to the box. There were three arms yeah. up there, and someone got it. Oh, nice pump fake. Wow. Wise and wide. What a mature play by Larry. Very subtle head fake. Foul. And then he's able to, again, he, his eyes are always on the rim, looking for the shot, absorbs a little bit of contact, doesn't matter, still hits the shot. That's so pretty. Ah, can't get the end one. Ball goes out of bounds. Thank you, it's basketball, but after we were tied at 27, yeah. it's now a five-point Buffalo lead. Well, in this game, a five-point lead seems huge. <laughs> yeah. It's Patriots led briefly in the first minute. The Buffs have led predominantly since then. Yeah. Never by a lot. Or just lead nine. Here's Joko. Down on the block to Wiley. Wiley to Fluta. Gets the nice lay in. See what they do defensively. Now they're going to go back and try to trap the basketball a little bit more. 
Blankley left open in the corner, can't get it to go. Nielsen comes in trying to get the rebound, knocks it out of bounds. 125 to play in the first. Buffs up 32-29. T. Tyler's basketball. Edelmeyer lob inside. It was almost a shot. Comes in. <laughs> it was such a high lob, lob pass. Inside to Wiley. He wants some foul. Crowd displeased there. Wiley wanted a foul. Buffs say it's out of bounds on Tyler. UT Tyler retains possession. Thomas gets it into Fluta. Now Joko. Thomas. Ten on the shot clock. Approaching one minute to play in the first. Pump fake. Three by Thomas. Too strong. Going up for the rebound. Knocked in the corner. Bell tracks it down. Good hustle by Cameron. Inside of a minute to play. Buffs up 32-29. Wise open. Three. Got it. Oh. What a first half for Larry Wise. Knocks down the three, and he's got 12. And well, he has 15 after that one. And we're going to have a moving screen. This is going to go against Ison Wiley. Here we'll see it. Oh, Larry between the legs, straight up. Little jab step, gets some space, knocks it down. Yep. Ison Wiley with the foul, his first player control foul. So Buffs basketball with 32 on the clock. Yeah, Larry may be working on a season high today. Again, right now 15 points, 5 of 8 from the field, a couple of threes. Season high 26 against Western Colorado. Two-second differential between the shot and game clock. Wise again, a little short, but Bell is going to get the rebound. 11 to play in the half. Tucson outside, wants a screen from Blankley. Tucson drives, kicks outside to Hayden. Floater blocked from behind. They call the charge on the Yeah, line. this is close. That's going to be Hayden's third. They're going to change the call. Well, that's luck for the boss. So if you change it, do they count the basket? The, oh, the, the basket the, came the after. after. Yeah, yeah, after yeah. he tipped Hayden it. Shot. So he's going to get two <laughs> free throws. He's got the rebound. So let's send Hayden Blankley to the line shooting twice. We're going to. And he missed it. That's the first one. Not much time left for the Patriots. Wait and see who that foul was on. It's on Fluta, his third. One point three to play in the first. Buffs up six. Blankley at the line. Second of two shots after misfiring on the first. Knocks down the second. We got the shot on. Shot falls short by Paul Joko, and we'll go to the half with the Buffs leading, thirty-six to twenty-nine. We're going to take a timeout. We come back. We'll have our halftime activities. Started off with Lucas. This is with Lady Buff head coach Josh Prock. After this timeout, you're watching Buffalo Basketball, the LSC Digital Network. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades, Contact Shimon Dillon Group for your appointment today. 
Bud Light, proudly brewed. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center here in Canyon, Texas. Halftime score, Buffaloes lead 36-29 over UT Tyler at the break. Right now being joined by Lady Buff head coach Josh Prock as West Texas A&M took care of business earlier uh, today in a win over the Patriots, 62-53. to And, uh, Coach, it was a big second half, 42-25. You outscored the Patriots after uh, trailing at halftime 28-22. Kent and I were wondering if uh, if the game plan today was just let the threes fly, right? For a while, all we were making were, was three-pointers. You actually made 12 for the game. But talk about that offensively. It seemed like UT Tyler was allowing the, as many threes as we would take, but they made it tough inside. Yeah, they, they were. I mean, they were basically – uh, just daring us to shoot from the three-point line. He said, we're going to take away your post game. Okay. We're not going to let you guys score inside, so you're going to have to make some threes. That's just what we challenge our girls at halftime. You're all great shooters. Okay. You know, you guys got to shoot with more confidence, right? I didn't think we were shooting with enough confidence in the first half. I could just tell. And yeah. So we started shooting with more confidence in the second half, and, I, I mean, it definitely showed. Yeah. D- defensively, a, a really good job, especially in that second half. Uh, 15 points allowed in the third quarter, just 10 points allowed in the fourth quarter, and this is against a team that really can shoot the basketball, but you kind of contain them offensively. Talk about your defense tonight in the win. Yeah, we did a great job. I mean, 34 is a – you got a game plan around her. Leah Davis. Yeah, she's a big kid, good good player. You know, and uh, we, we knew throughout the game we wanted to eventually start doubling her. We just didn't – I didn't I, – I wanted to get it at the right time. And I thought we were up four or five there in that fourth quarter, third, in the third, fourth, and we just felt like that was the right time. Yeah. Let's start doubling her. And I, and I think that's kind of threw them off, and that's when we kind of separated ourselves. Player of the game for us today was Lauren Taylor. She finished with a game-high 16 points, also had six rebounds. She she was a player that really, especially in that second half, started shooting with confidence, started making some outside shots. But Lauren has her game has come on of late. We, we've talked about her a lot. It seems like uh, over the last several weeks, and uh, she seems to be playing with a lot more confidence, and that is great not only for her but it's great for your team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Lauren, we we all knew Lauren was a talented kid, right? It just knew once she gets used to the system, gets used to what we're trying to do, and uh, like like you just said, Lucas. I mean, she's starting to come into her own a little bit, and really playing with a lot of confidence so it's been fun to see you got good uh, production off of your bench as well today uh, 16 points off the bench a couple of players that i thought did a, a really good job for you madison cast and then also uh, macaulay gregory made a couple of really big shots talk about those two players and what they were able to do in, in limited action but great production yeah madison i mean she stepped up and hit her shots when she needed to she had that up and under one in there in yes. the second half and uh i thought Madison did a great job today of guarding their big She kids. played good defense. You know, because yes. she's big enough and strong enough to help hold her out of the paint. Right. And, uh, you know, give all the credit in the world to, to McCauley. I mean, you know, the other night, just, you know, she didn't get an opportunity to get in there. And then tonight she was ready to go. And Instant offense. Two huge threes tonight. Like, yeah. And that's the one thing I love about this team is that everybody's ready when their name is called. You don't know when your name is going to be called, but we always encourage our kids to stay ready. And it, it's been proven night in and night out that these kids have been ready to go, and so all the credit goes to them. I'm very proud of them. Yeah. Alumni weekend, uh, so that was really cool to see. And, and it's, uh, we gave an assist, in fact, to uh, to the alumni at halftime because they went down and greeted the girls as they came out of the locker room. Uh, things turned around in the second half. But talk about that. You were able to welcome back uh, a lot of players, some coaches as well, and see their families, and that was pretty cool. I know I talked to a couple of players and their families at, uh, at halftime and after the game, and uh, they were pretty excited about that. Yeah, it was great. Absolutely. Really great, Luke. Thanks for bringing that up, Lucas. I mean, it was great to see all the former alumni, but we did a, a little reception type event last night. Mm-hmm. I think above all, let's all be extremely excited to welcome back Bob Schneider yeah. back into the house. You know, and he was back into the house today. And, you know, it's gonna, he's, he's been to some of our practices and stuff, so it's been great. I mean, you got a guy like that that's in your own town. Yeah. Not to use him. He's won a few games. Won a few games. It would be <laughs> kind of crazy on my part, so... We're going to keep using him, and we're, it's, we're grateful that he's back in the fold. Speaking of winning games, uh, got this stat from Brent Seals uh, toward the end of the game. 250th win for the Lady Buffs since opening up this arena here. And I was here for the first one and, and here for this one today. Uh, 
87%. That's the winning percentage for the Lady Buffs in the first United Bank Center. This is your first, you've played a lot of games here. This is your your first year as head coach here. It's it's a special place. It is. I mean, all credit in the world goes to the former players and coaches that have helped build that. Yeah. And then let's not we'd be remiss to say we have the best fans in the country. I mean, these fans have tremendously make it a great home great home environment yeah. for us. And so shout out to all of them. It's just it's it's a very, very fun environment to coach in. Two great wins at home this week, and uh, good luck on the road next week. We're going to go south, right, and go St. Mary's, St. Edwards, or St. Edwards, St. Mary's in that order? St. Edwards, St. Mary's. That's okay. correct, sir. Okay. Well, great job this week, Coach. Congratulations, and let's keep it going on the road next week. Thank you, Coach. All right. Appreciate it. We'll take a break. Come back. We'll have the halftime stats for you here from the men's game. WT leads at the break, 36-29 over UT Tyler. We're back after this. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. 80 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Bank Center, West Texas A&M, leading University of Texas, Tyler, 36-29. Here's a look at our first half stats. First, the team stats. See, the Buffaloes have held UT Tyler to 30% from the floor, just 7 of 23. The Buffs shooting 13 of 30. That's 43%. From three-point range, neither team really lighting it up. The Patriots, two of seven for 28%. The Buffaloes, three of 12 for 25%. And two of those three coming from the hand of Larry Wise. UT Tyler stayed in the game by going to the free throw line. 13 of 14, that's 93%. The Buffs, seven of 11 for 63%. Individually, Milan Sabo, 
four points, three rebounds. Jackson Edelmeyer has five points. Micah Fuller has not scored. Patrick Savora has not scored. Solomon Thomas, four points, one rebound. Eson Wiley, eight points, four rebounds. He also has two assists and a block shot. Zaire Mateen, four points, one rebound. Finn Fluta, two points, two boards. Paul Joko, two points, two rebounds. Kyle Frelo has played a minute nine without registering statistics. For the Buffaloes, Kevon Booker, two points, four rebounds. Zach Toussaint, seven points, one rebound. Hayden Blankley, four points, three rebound. Addison Wallace with two points. Larry Wise, 15 points, five rebounds, three assists. Cameron Bell, three rebounds. Jesse Awezi with one rebound. Parker Nielsen, six points, two boards. Jalen Williams with one rebound. Jonas Carlisle has committed one foul. The Buffs out-rebounding the Patriots, 21 to 15. Patriots with four points off turnovers. It's a three for WT. Buffs with 12 points in the paint to eight for UT Tyler. Buffs have led by as many as nine. The Patriots have led by two points, that being in the first minute of the game. Neither team has had a scoring run larger than seven, but the Buffaloes have led this game 18 minutes and 33 seconds. We're going to take a two-minute timeout. When we come back, we'll have your second half of play. Buffs lead at 36-29. You're watching West Texas A&M basketball on the LSC Digital Network. Days are built on mornings, and Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings, burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm. Yeah, all right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast. Topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shimon Dillon Group for your appointment today. Bud Light, proudly brewed. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. With a taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. 36 29 halftime score. We're ready for second half play here from the First United Bank Center. See what each team makes uh, in terms of adjustments heading into this second half. You know, this was a game coming into it. I was anticipating a lot of flow back and forth, baskets, high score, a lot of fluid offense. It has really been a half court basketball game. Yeah. Yeah, last year, can't, you know, the last several seasons, 90s, 100s. 
Just your 60s and 70s, and a strong move to start it for Addison Wallace. The unfortunate thing, though, Kent, is that Kevon Booker was following the play, trying to get a rebound, and he may have stepped on someone's oh, foot. He needs help getting over to the bench. Yikes. Don't like to see that. Don't like to see that. Lucas Kenzie sits down on the end of the bench and grabs the ankle. As Let's see if we can look at it here on the replay. Basketball trainer Austin Feltner is over there tending to him. Well, he didn't even get up in the air. Kavon was running, and he just stepped on someone's foot. Mm. We hope for the best on this. Good take by Addison Wallace, though. Inside, here's Wiley. Turn around from eight, won't go. Wise with the rebound, brings it up court. He's going to drive. Spins off the glass and in. Oh, my. Get out of here, Larry. That's incredible. When you're having a day like Larry is, though, that shot is going it in. It goes in. Man, 40-29, Buffs' largest lead at 11. And Larry's having a complete game, KJ. He leads him with six rebounds right now. He's assisting, playing great defense, putting on a show. Fuller on the wing, up top to Thomas. That's Ooh, went in. Thanks, fans. Solomon Thomas with the bucket. Blankley with the stuff. Nice feed from outside. Tucson saw Blankley start the cut, fed him with the pass. The Patriot defense did not respond. There they try a lob. And Hayden Blankley is going to be called with the hold on Sabo. Here's a replay. This ball's coming to you, Lucas. Nice. The back door cut. Nobody home on the backside defensively. Great job on the replay there. At the other end, Blankley picks up his third personal. First team foul of the half against the Buffaloes. 42-31 buffs. Mm. Not for long. Michael Fuller knocks down the three. Yeah, Fuller got a big ball screen, and Larry made a decision to go under the ball screen. That gave enough time for the opening in the wide open three. Here's Tucson wide open for three. Yep, and won't go. Edelmeyer with the rebound. Quickly up court. He wants to do it himself off the glass. Won't go. Blankley with the board. Quickly ahead to Wise. Blankley. Thought about the step back, instead goes to Wise, and we're going to have a hold. He's so difficult to guard. I mean, he draws fouls. Uh, the assignment when, when you're taking Larry Wise, you got to make sure he doesn't get a three point look. He can put it on the floor. He also has size and length. He's on Wiley, guilty of his second personal. Wise to inbounds in front of the Buffalo's bench. Training staff still looking at. Kevon Booker, looks like they're taping up his ankle. Williams to the lineup, replacing Blankley. Here's Tucson at the line, turn around, won't go, a little short. Rebound comes down to Jaku, takes it all the way in, wow. yes, and one. That's about as out of control but still in control somehow that a player can be, and he was able to finish it. That ball was loose the whole way down the floor, but Joku was able to... Get uh, control of it at the last second, draw a foul, and make it. Cameron Bell fouled him, but not hard enough as Joku converts and goes to the line for the and one. You're right. We After saying this has been a half-court game, yeah. the first three minutes of this second half have been what I thought this entire game was going to be. And Paul Joku right there showed the athleticism that he possesses. Back he gets the old-fashioned three-point play. Back to a five-point Buffalo lead. Just moments ago, they led by 11. 17-20 to play in the second. Wallace, three, won't go. Rebound comes down to the Patriots, Joku. Good double team by Cameron Bell. Whoa. Oh, there we're going to have a technical. Little retaliation, Ison Wiley and Cameron Bell fighting for the ball, and when they came over to the sideline, Bell grabbed the ball away, and Wiley got the elbow up there. 
The refs will go look at it after they send the team to the benches. Well, it started off with an excellent defensive play by Cameron Bell. Watch him come off of his man from behind and just take the ball. Yeah, at that last second. That just last one, that's that's going to cost him. A little bit of a forearm there, and so the Solomon officials will Thomas talk it over. Not happy over in the team huddle. And that's communication there, KJ. Cameron comes off of his man, and so when that happens offensively, you've got to be screaming at that guy with the ball, double team, double team, you know, and move to where he can, can make the pass. But Looking down at the uh, baseline, Kavon's up trying to work the kinks out of that ankle, but he is hobbling and in pain. So will the officials go to a, a monitor? Right now they're just huddled up to talk. Right now they're they going to see if to. they all agree on what they see, but okay. now they're going to go to the monitor. They get together. They talk amongst themselves. Here's what I saw. Here's what I saw. Let's go confirm. And that's where we're at right now is Anthony Thomas and Daniel Schaefer at the monitor looking. Darren Griffin, the yeah. lead ref, will take a look if needed. And, and, you know, the whistle had already blown. I mean, it, it was going to be a jump ball, and, in fact, the possession arrow showed it was going to stay with UT Tyler. So that's one where the emotions got the best of the Patriots there. Once the whistle's blown, just, you know, stop stop wrestling for the ball, basically, because it doesn't matter who comes out with the basketball. There's already been a, a call made. You've got two things you're looking at right here, Lucas. One is the push after Cameron grabbed the ball. We're assuming everything was on UT Tyler. They yeah. may find something against Cameron Bell. But the other is the elbow up to the head. That's a um, that's a no-no. Let's check some of these scores from the Lone Star Conference. On the men's side, we already mentioned uh, earlier, Dallas Baptist defeats St. Ed's today, 77-73 in a tight one. Midwestern State still trailing at home. And if St. Mary's is able to go uh, to Wichita Falls and get a win, that'd be a big one. They lead at 52-45. It's a tough place to win. And then a final at the Rip Griffin Center. No problem with the scoring today. LCU puts it on Oklahoma Christian, 88-56. to See, o Oklahoma Christian is struggling this year. Well, all three officials have taken a look, and now they're meeting back at midcourt. And after saying that we don't have very lengthy reviews in Division Two, I'm about to make a ham sandwich while they figure <laughs> this one out. Which sounds pretty good right now. Eastern New Mexico on the women's side defeats Arkansas Fort Smith 75-59. Other women's scores. Of course, the Lady Buffs defeated UT Tyler right here today, 62-53. to Midwestern State women, they defeat St. Mary's 79-73. Texas Woman's wins at Kitty McGee Arena, 70-57, to defeating the Hilltoppers of St. Ed's. And that, uh, that rounds out the scores for this afternoon. You do have some cancellations around the conference yeah. on the men's side. A&M Commerce and Cameron is postponed. Tomorrow, A&M International at Western New Mexico is postponed. On the women's side, Again, Cameron has postponed their game with AM Commerce as well as AM International at Western. Also, Oklahoma Christians women at LCU is a postponement. So that's unfortunate. The games we play. Someday we'll get past all this, though. Hopefully. Yeah. No, we will. And we'll try and figure out what's going on down on the floor right now. Initially, it was just a, a tie-up. I mean, Cameron just came yeah. in, tied up the ball. Then we had extra curriculums. And the amount of time they're talking to Tom Brown, I get the idea that either something will be called against Cameron Bell or they did not call a flagrant on the push. Because Lewis Wilson is just standing there and He's being very patient about everything. And we'll try and get an explanation as well. Okay. Tom Brown still pleading his case about something. The 
ball is going to go. Oh, they called a double technical foul. Kent Johnson uh, just went down to try to get an explanation from one of the officials, so he'll come back up. Good hustle by KJ. And I think I heard them say double technical foul called, so that means that the Buffs were guilty of something as well. As UT Tyler gets set to throw it in on the sideline. Score 42-37. Still 17.03 to play in the second half. What do you got, KJ? I'm still trying to figure it out. Double technical? A technical foul was assessed to number two. He saw Wiley, number 33 of the Buffs, Addison Wallace. So they had a double technical. So Addison Wallace? They, they called a technical against Ison Wiley, so that will be his third personal. But then also, somewhere along the line, Addison Wallace he must got have hit said with something. a technical as well. Mm-hmm. So that's both players' third personals. Here's Sabo inside, puts it off the glass and in. And it's an 8-0 run for the Patriots over the last minute and a half. Well, if anything, that was a momentum breaker for somebody. Wow. 16.30 to play, buffs up by three, 42 to 39. Here's Wise, thought about it. Oh, he's in trouble. Put a hand on the ball, at this buzzer, puts up a shot, doesn't go in. How did he release that shot, Kent, with he his left hand? left-handed. And Dylan. Dalen Williams gets the rebound. That may be the most impressive. The foul. That may be the most impressive miss that I've seen in a while. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Forty-two to thirty-nine. Still your score. It's Buff basketball. They'll throw it in under the basket. Larry Wise to inbound. Nielsen trapped in the corner. Stuck. So gets it out to Bell. A Weezy trying to post up inside. Nothing going there as he's being defended tightly inside. Here's Wallace on the wing. Shot clock at five. Wallace drives, floats, puts it up. Short. A Weezy with the follow and one. There's some muscle inside from the young freshman. Good hustle by a Weezy. Calling him a freshman is like calling a Ferrari a car. <laughs> And we got a timeout on the floor. 15.55 to play. Watch yeah, wise the misses. freshman here get the offensive board. Bulls his way back up and in. 44-39 Buffaloes. You're watching WT Basketball on the LSC Digital Network. Thanks for your attention to the board. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. West Texas A&M out of this timeout. We'll have a free throw coming here for Jesse Aweezy, who just made that and one, getting a rebound and going right back up against the defense. 15-55 still to play second half. Buffs lead by five in what has been a very tight game the entire way. We started to have a little flow to start the half, but then our stoppage for the uh, technical fouls kind of slowed it down a little bit as Aweezy misfires. On the bonus, 44-39 Buffaloes. Buffs 
four of nine for the half. UT Tyler, four of six. But the Buffs shooting 43% for the game. Good ball movement here by the Patriots. Ball loose on the floor. Cameron Bell really getting after it. Now a double team, yeah. and the Buffs force the turnover. I, I tell you C what. Cameron Bell was all over Solomon Thomas, and then Parker Nielsen came over with the double team. Thomas dribbled the ball out of bounds. Cameron Bell has not scored. He's over two from the field, but he has three rebounds, and the things that he's doing that are not going to show up on this box score are outstanding. His defensive pressure, his hustle, the double teams. He's being a pass right now against the Patriots, and – playing some big minutes today. Here's Wise. He's got 17, trying to reach the 19 that he had Thursday against Commerce. Nine on the shot clock. Kicks it out to Tucson with five. Zach drives in, puts it up. No, a Wheezy with the rebound. Kicks it out to Wise. Three-pointer for Tucson. No, he's going to kick it in the corner. Bell has the buff set up, the half court. And we're going to have a foul inside. Wow, the shot clock was down to 11 seconds for the Patriots. And if this goes on Fluta, that's his fourth. And it is. Team foul number five against the Patriots. They were playing excellent defense. The Buffs were having a hard time getting a shot off. I'm ready for Zach to take the three out yeah. there, and he, he passes it up. Wise to inbound, fresh 20 for the Buffs. Uweezy, up top to Bell. Tucson on the wing, shot clock at 10. Zach gets an opening, takes it in, off the glass, it is! That's such a tough shot, and Zach, again, fades away from the bigger defenders coming over and is able to put the nice touch on it off the backboard. 46-39, buffs by seven, and we've got a charge. Kyle Freelo. Goes in out of control. Hayden Blankley over his career has improved so much uh, as a defensive player. He's gotten stronger, but he's also just become smarter. Watch this one here. Outside the. Standing his ground outside the arc. Buffs up seven. Approaching the 14-minute mark of the half. Tucson on the wing. Drives. Ah, tries to find a wheezy. Jesse cut towards the basket. And Zach thought he'd be going to the corner. He ran out of hang time, that, <laughs> that particular play. And just ran out of options, too. Zach's jump is a little better than mine, but it's not in the Kavon Booker range. Speaking of Kavon, we haven't seen him return to the lineup since his injury, but he's sitting closer to the coaches, so that's a positive sign. There's a buff foul. This is going to go against Addison Wallace, and for Addison, that's going to be number four. Team foul number four against the Buffaloes. Yep, Addison bumped him from behind. The strong drive by Micah Fuller. He averages 13 points a game. The Buffs have held him to just three today. They'll make it four as he knocks down the first, averaging nearly 13 points. So they're going to put Parker Nielsen in. Uh, Dalen Williams has not played as much today. Tom Brown feeling like he needs a quicker lineup on the floor. Fuller, a 96% shooter from the line, makes them both. And the, the Patriots just continue to hang around. They just hang, yes. 46 to 41. The Patriots 9 and 1 on the year. The Buffs 15 and 2. 46 41, our score, WT. Here's a long three. Tucson knocks it down. <laughs> Johnsburg, Illinois, we know you're watching. Zach may have been under the weather this morning, but he's playing fine. Buffs force the turnover. 
Yeah, on the three number point, eleven against the Patriots. On the three point basket by Zach, the defense was late. They were just late getting over Joku. Thought he was there. Too much space. Eight feet away, jumping at you, isn't going to get it cut. Yeah, the scouting report with Zach Toussaint says if you're guarding him, by the time that he steps into the arena, you better find him and pick him up. Here's Wise. Puts up a three, no. Fight for the rebound. They're going to get a wheezy over the back, I believe. That's the right call there. That's who it is. Crowd doesn't like it, but that's the call. He definitely went over the back. I, the only thing you could say is that did Sabo have an arm hooked, but. Torian Harris returns to the lineup, replacing Oweezy. Torian played a few minutes early. Forty-nine, forty-one. Buffs by eight, just under thirteen. Here's a three from outside, missed by Fuller. It's going to be a dead ball rebound for the Buffaloes. Tucson, Wise, Nielsen, Harris, and Blankley for the Buffaloes. Fuller, Mateen, Sabo, Samora. And Joku for the Patriots. And Wise gets inside and takes a step. Yeah, he thought he had just made a pivot. Darren Griffin said he picked up that foot at some point in travel. May have picked up, changed his pivot foot. That yeah. happens a lot, you don't realize. 12 and a half to play, buffs up. Good pass. Eight. Nice pass inside to Fluta. He gets the bucket. Coaching the 12 minute mark. Wise found Harris, but couldn't get the pass there in time. Patriots recovered, picked it off, and threw it away. Oh, it was deflected by the buff. It just touched Torrey and Harris's hand. They were trying to go back to Sabo like they had done on the previous possession. You know, for a 6'10 player, Sabo has some speed. He can get down the court in very few steps. We've got a timeout on the floor, 12 to play. Buffs up, 49-43. You're watching Buffalo Basketball on the LSC Digital Network. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Buffs lead at 49-43, 12 minutes to play. Larry Wise, 17 points, six boards, three assists. Zach Tucson, 17 points, a rebound, and assist. Buffs have forced 11 turnovers, but uncharacteristically, they've committed at 13 themselves. They're getting outscored on points off turnovers, but they lead on the scoreboard. Oweezy gets a hand on. They're gonna get the inbounds, yeah, they're going to get Sabo over the back, and, and he missed that shot. He would like that one back. So Milan Sabo picks up his second, team foul number seven against oh, wow. the Patriots. So just like the first half, free throw shooting contest for the last 11.55. Shooting free throws for the final 12 minutes. Hayden Blankley goes to the line. He's a 66 percenter on the year. He's 
got four points in this contest. Let's make it six. Locks down the first. Hayden has hit double figure scoring this year five times. His big game was at Eastern New Mexico when he tallied 21. Patriots getting their chances offensively. They just have not been able to be consistent enough today. Good ball movement, but wow. there's a steal. Torian Harris got in the passing lane. Here's Wise in the paint. Got it. Nice feed from Blankley. That's a matter of being patient, not rushing it, and getting called for a charge. 19 points for Larry Wise. Very efficient. Buffs lead up to nine. Their largest today has been 11. In the corner, oh, passing up the three was Joku. Taking the three and missing it is Mateen, but they get the offensive rebound. Mateen drives on Harris, step back, no good. Ball out of bounds, Cameron Bell yeah. knocked it out of bounds. Yeah, the Patriots now shooting 35% from the field. They're just 12 of 34, 3 of 10 from the three-point line. Neither team really has, has opened things up from the three-point line today. Buffs have just made four. On the inbounds, there's a travel. Wiley took a step on the dribble drive. Buffs lead it. 52-43, 10.56 to play. You just keep waiting for either team to get a run. Yeah. But there have been no runs in this game. Buff's largest was eight, as was the Patriots. Here's Harris to Wise. Likely he'll take the three and knock it down. Tom Brown calls for a, a timeout after Hayden hits the three. Blankley has 10, his sixth double-figure scoring outing, and at 10.33, we've got a timeout on the floor. Buffs lead it, 55-43. Take a look at the ball movement. And Hayden from the top of the key, he has been deadly. You're watching WT Basketball right here on the LSC Digital Network. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating many years of success, this is the Lone Star After Hayden Blankley just knocked down his second three-pointer of the game today, the Buffs now enjoy their largest lead so far today, 55-43, with still 10-33 to play. And the Patriots have played hard. They played tough defense for most of this game, but if they want to have a chance here, they're going to have to open up it on the offensive side. Patriots basketball on the inbound, approaching the 10-minute mark. Buffs up 12. Their largest lead of the contest. Here's Wiley with the drive. He's going to be fouled. And if this is Hayden, that's his fourth. Team foul number six against the Buffaloes. Blankley just didn't have possession and then jumped into Wiley. Something UT Tyler has done very well today is shoot free throws. 16 out of 17 today. As... Eason Wiley knocks down the first. 
He has nine points and an opportunity for a tenth. Second shot's got it. Ten points for Wiley. Full court pressure. Ten point game. Buffs break the pressure. Bell goes right around the defense. And a wheezy. Oh, ho, draws the foul. This is going to go against Eason Wiley with the block. They nearly got that trap. Cameron Bell had the speed to get it down the sideline, though. And that led to a wheezy getting an opportunity down low. They say three passes should break a press, but if you're fast enough, yeah. you dribble through it. Louise knocks down the first. Cameron, he's such an easy player to, to cheer for. Cameron Bell, such a nice kid and a hard worker. During our visit with Chris Gove before the game, he was talking about the recruitment of Cameron and how Cameron was recruiting himself to WT. He wanted to be a Buffalo, and when he would take, oh, nice cut there. Paul Juku comes in the back door for the slam. When Cameron would make recruiting visits to other schools, he would be calling the WT staff, saying, I'm here, but I want to be at your place. And finally they said, come on over. From the uh, Sooner State out of Edmond, Oklahoma. They got Torian Harris with a charge that time, so it gives the ball back to the Patriots. Plays his role well, though, Cameron does. Good defender, good point guard, good passer. Does the dirty work. Here's a strong drive and bucket. Patrick Samora. Eight-point game. The Buffs throw it away. Almost. Louise gets it and calls timeout. The Buffs wanted to throw it away. Louise <laughs> wouldn't let it happen. 9.29 to play. Buffs 57. Patriots 49. We'll be back after this timeout. You're watching Buffalo Basketball on the LSC Digital Network. Bud Light, proudly brewed. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Inbounds to Wise. Goes far side the bell. Here's Tucson, wants to drive. Kicks it back on top to Bell. Zach with 10 on the shot clock. Comes up top, wants to drive. Little floater off the glass. That one didn't quite get there. Yeah, that was great defense by Edelmeyer. Wiley brings it down, turns the corner, and is fouled by Parker Nielsen. And for Nielsen, that will be his third two, personal foul. Team foul number eight against the Buffaloes. Tyson Wiley two, goes one. to the line, shooting one and one. He is a perfect eight of eight thus far. And he missed. But the long rebound comes back out to the Patriots. Again, Buffs having to play without Kevon Booker. Injured his ankle, has only played 12 minutes. He went out very early in the game and did not get a chance to come back. Devon, 12 minutes, had three block shots. Yeah. The Patriots turned the ball over at a time when they need buckets. Eight point Buffalo lead, 8.42 to play. Buffs hit the road next week. Thursday, they'll be in Austin at St. Edwards. Andre Cook's team, always tough. And one of the more heated rivalries of late between yeah. WT and St. Edwards. Here's Wallace Ooh. blocked. Ooh. Joku gets up there and says, not now. 
Then on Saturday, they'll be in San Antonio, play St. Mary's. And the weather will probably be perfect. It'll be 75 degrees and no wind. Here's Edelmeyer. Eight on the shot clock. Solomon Thomas, no. Harris with the rebound for the Buffs. He'll bring it up court himself. I trust the Buffs won't spend all Saturday morning at the fine Mexican restaurants in town like I would be doing. That's exactly right, KJ. They'll come out ready to play. Here's Wise. Moves on in. Goes strong. Yes, counted and one. They, they tried to take a charge, but Larry went to the side, and that's why they caught the blocking foul there. A good attempt from Evan Wiley. He but goes in against two. two Patriot defenders, draws the foul, and gets the bucket. Yeah, this is a smart offensive play. Watch Larry here on the drive. Going to just go to the side a little bit and Left still put handed. it in. Larry has 21. We've got a full timeout on the floor. 7.38 to play. Buffs lead it 59-49. You're watching Buffalo Basketball on the LSC Digital Network. Get on your Could be. We are Carpet Tech, and we are family. More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? West Texas A&M leads by 10 points, 59-49 after Larry Wise is able to convert, taking it strong to the 10. Larry leading the way with 21 points. Buffs have three players in double figures right now. Larry with 21. Zach Toussaint scoring 12 points. And Hayden Blankley with 10. And uh, they just continue to get solid performances from a lot of different guys. Today, there's been several players that have played hard and done some nice things defensively for the Buffaloes. And hoping to Gain uh, win number 16 today, KJ. It'd be pretty impressive if they were able to go 16-2 and two and uh, also stretch the conference record to what would be 3-1 and one if they can hold on. Pretty impressive. You go back over the last five years, you'd be hard-pressed to find too many teams not named Gonzaga who have won more basketball games than what the Buffaloes have. Well, and as a result, head coach Tom Brown continues to get closer and closer to already 200 wins. He's got 196 wins going into today, so he could pick up 196, and he's only lost 45 times. It's a pretty good winning percentage. I think that first year was 18 and 13. Got a foul away from the ball. They've got Larry Wallace with a hold. Of all the things Larry has done today, fouling is not one of them. That's his first personal foul. And he has been on the floor 28 minutes. It's going to send Micah Fuller to the line, shooting one and one. Fuller's first shot is good. Yeah, the Lone Star Conference, we talked about it Thursday in the Buffs win over Commerce, how many really good teams there are. Lubbock Christian coming into today. Lubbock Christian was 14-0. UT Tyler 9-1. International 9-2. The Buffs 15-2. Commerce 10-2. Still haven't seen Angelo State. But KJ, they're 10-3. Fuller makes some bows. Here comes the pressure. Tucson in the backcourt to Bell, back to Zach, and they get it across the timeline. Approaching seven to play in the game. Wise pump fake inside to a Wheezy for the slam. He could have just done the layup, but Jesse said, nope, I'm dunking this thing. Turnover. Blind pass by Thomas. Bell at the other end won't go. Quickly the other way. Two miss miss by Joku. 
Wise gets the rebound. Thomas fouls. And we're shooting twice. Well, let's watch both ends here. Nice. Here's a Wheezy with the slam. Yeah, and a good pass as well. Buffs have done a nice job with 12 assists today. Uncharacteristic 14 turnovers, but this Patriots team, they're long, they're physical, they're very athletic, and uh, they're going to give some teams fits this season. Buffs go up. 12, 63 to 51, and you look at what the Buffs have done both today and Thursday against two very talented, very up and down the court teams in A&M Commerce and UT Tyler, and you think they've done it without Julius Brown. And and for today, KJ, all but 12 minutes, they've done it without Kevon Booker. Team performance. 64-51 buffs. Here's Thomas. Almost throws the ball away. Fuller saves it. Thomas outside. Pump fake. Three. No. Louise with the rebound. This crowd starting to sense good things for the Buffaloes as we approach six minutes and the Buffs lead by 13. And what a defensive job by WT. UT Tyler coming into this game, leading the conference in scoring 82 points a game. Not today. They've got 51. Fuller picks up the foul. That's his third. All right. Since since December 13th, only one team has scored more than 69 points against the Buffs. Champions College had 40. Montana State Billings 57. Lindenwood 59. Arkansas Fort Smith in a winning effort, 75. Then you've got Oklahoma Christian at 56, and AM Commerce, who is averaging 81, yeah. scored 69. Just a slight bump there is going to be a foul. I think they got Larry again. Foul call number 35, Larry Wise. Well, they say defense wins championships, and uh, I know a guy that would agree with that is head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide, Nick Saban, right? Looking he's, forward to Monday. He's going for another championship. I don't know if Georgia has a chance or not, but I found this kind of funny, KJ. They, they were showing the pictures of uh, Alabama after winning the Cotton Bowl, which was the semifinal, right? And the players are celebrating. Everyone's smiling and uh, enjoying it, except for one man. Nick He's Saban. already thinking two weeks ahead. Yeah, he, he looked like uh, he was not very happy in the photo, but that's because that wasn't the biggest game for him. Addison Wallace breaks the press himself. Nice move by Zach, and he finishes. He's so good with that jump that's shot off the bounce. the exact same thing you do in practice where you set the chair at the free throw line, you dribble around it, do your little stop and pop. 67-53, Buffs by 14. Oh, nice shot on the other side. Make it 12. Samora. Samora converts, yeah. Wise. Out to Bell. Back to Wise. Inside of five to play. Buffs up 67-55. You know, the Buffs have had good defensive teams the past three or four years, but when you're scoring 90 points, you don't really look at what the defense has done. But when you're scoring 75 and you're holding your opponents to 55. Yeah, that, the defense has been tremendous. No doubt about that. <laughs> Addison Wallace. It's going to be a goal 10. <laughs> no doubt about it. Yeah, it looked pretty cool, but. Credited to Zaire Mateen. It was still a goal 10. And at the other end, fans and Larry Wise wanted a call, but yeah, if, you're, if, you're, one if this is at the park, right? Oh, it's a block, but that uh, was already up there. Above the cylinder. I say at the park. Do kids even play at the park anymore, KJ? <laughs> You'd have a tough time today, though, to be fair, playing at the park oh, because oh, the wind is house. blowing 30. You've got to play the wind when you play in the Texas Panhandle. <laughs> Thank you. 
427 to play. Buffs by 10, 67-57. UT Tyler just keeps hanging right there. They're not out of it yet. Here's Fuller. Tries to pass across the lane. Blankley gets his hand on it, knocks it out of bounds. This UT Tyler team twice this season has scored 100 points, 100 against Dallas Christian, 100 against Southwestern Adventist. Not quite LSC teams, but they are capable. Oh, my. <laughs> Fluta tried an inlet pass, and Jesse Oweezy read his thoughts, jumped up in the air, and picked it out of the sky. Jesse's had a good performance today. Ah, they got him for an illegal. And that's Jesse's fourth. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 351 remaining. Buffs by 10. You're watching Buffalo basketball on the LSC Digital Network. walk-on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day with a taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons, we live for this. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. All right, they'll come out of the timeout, the buffs. Have a 10-point lead, West Texas A&M leading UT Tyler. Largest lead today was at 14 points. And the Patriots still have three minutes and 51 seconds to play. But every time that UT Tyler has, has cut into that lead and gotten it to six or seven, the Buffs have went right back and extended it back to double digits. UT Tyler in the second half shooting 50%, the Buffs 47%. But the Buffs have taken more shots. They've had more opportunities. Here's Mateen. Baseline left side, missed by Samora. Rebound, Oweezy. Buffs by 10, three and a half to play. Looking to go 16 and two on the year. Without Julius Brown, they've persevered. And we Looking hope forward to getting him back and they're gonna call a charge on Larry as he Back to in and over Patrick Samora. Yeah, not, not enough ball movement there and a smart defensive play by the Patriots. And, and we want to say uh, we hope Juju gets uh, back very soon and hopefully he can, can get healthy again. He's such a fun player to watch. And a great guy to be around. Yep. Now the majority of his former teammates at Lincoln Memorial went to Indiana State with Coach Josh Schertz. There's a nice finger roll by Solomon Thomas. Yeah, that team last year in the Final Four, Lincoln Memorial, they were so talented. Well, four of the five are at Indiana State. Here's a Weezy knocking it down. Up, 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 and away for Jesse Aweezy. And for the past two weeks, that Indiana State team has had COVID issues, and those guys haven't been playing. Well, unfortunately, Julius hasn't been either. Well, late whistle there. Late. Now on the defensive end, they got Zach. He looks on incredulous from the baseline. For that Zach, it's his first that whistle. Personal. That whistle was more late than my wife on Sunday mornings as we're getting ready to go to church, Kent. <laughs> that was so late. Chelsea, I never would have thought that. <laughs> It's true. Ask the kids. <laughs> Mateen knocks down the first, makes it a nine-point game, and it's back to eight. 
Buffs trying to break the press. That's a dangerous pass, and it's a turnover. Here's Fuller. Up. Oh, almost had it go. that would have gone, and that would have cut the lead to six. But it didn't. Foul goes on a Wheezy, and that's his fifth. Foul call number one, Jesse Wheezy. Jesse fouls out, eight points, five rebounds, one assist, two steals, three of three from the floor. Solid game from the young man from Waxahachie. Excuse me, Roanoke. Sixty-nine, sixty-one. Our score, two and a half to play. Now Addison Wallace only has four fouls, so they can still use him if they need to. Fuller at the line, and he knocks down the first. For this game, UT Tyler, twenty-five of twenty-seven from the line. Yeah, it's what's hurting the Buffs uh, the last three minutes is the turnovers. Big miss. Two and a half to play. Buffs by seven. Wise. Shot clock at ten. No ball. Pass the ball. Here's Bell to Tucson. Mid range jumper. Got it. Yep. Nice assist from Cameron Bell. Nine point lead. Inside of two to play. And down goes Bell. <laughs> Charge on Trey Davis. Just entered the ball game. Sophomore from the Bronx. Cameron played that one well. He did. Now the Buffs need to get it across the timeline. 155 to play, leading by nine. Everyone clears out. Larry brings it across. Now Bell. Bell outside, dribbles around. 12 on the shot clock. Eventually, we got to get closer to Wise the basket with the here. Ball. Turn around. Little too strong. Oh, it goes in. That looked like it was going to be a little too strong, and it just died up there. And a steal on the other side by none other than Cameron Bell. Great Wise play. with a career high 27 tonight. Approaching one minute to play, leading by 11. Tucson feeds Bell. Bell dribbles and gives it back to Zach. Tucson drives from 12. Got it. How about the strength from Zach Tucson on that shot to create the space? Zach with 18 this afternoon. Buffs by 13. Here's a three drained by Zaire Mateen. Makes it a 10-point game. It's going to be a timeout. Let's take a look at Zach here. Man, he gets in that 12 to 15-foot range, yeah. and he just hangs there. 42 seconds to play. It's a 30-second timeout. We'll keep so, it here. Yeah. Buffs, as we mentioned, go on the road this week. Lucas at St. Edwards Thursday at St. Mary's Saturday. They return to the first United Bank Center. January 20th and 22nd for the Angelo State UT Permian Basin Swing. Yeah, those those games are big. I mean, we've, we've played uh, really on the women's and the men's side for those squads, some pretty good matchups throughout the years. You know, going back to Zach Toussaint, 18 points today, and we said it at the beginning of the broadcast, he's not feeling 100%, so that tells you what a special player he is to still be able to come out today and, and dial in and have a great game. Well, uh, not to mix sports here, but a couple weeks ago, ESPN analyst Kerb Street made the comment that some players do not play for the love of the game anymore. Yeah. There is absolutely no doubt that number 14 does not love to play basketball. Yeah, it, it wouldn't matter the stakes. I mean, preseason, exhibition, pickup basketball, Zach Tucson, he loves to play. We watch him go back on the court. He's, he's breathing hard. You can tell he's fatigued, but... He's probably got another shot in him if he needs it. And 
the Buffs take care of the basketball, should be able to. UT Tyler has all five orange jerseys in the backcourt, guarding on this inbounds from Bell. He gets it into Tucson. Zach gets free of the double team and now starts up court. Buffs get it across the line and now they'll just play keep away. Tucson fouled outside. Zaire Mateen with his first personal of the day. That's going to send Tucson to the line, shooting twice. Zach, three of four from the line thus far. One of the best free throw shooters for the Buffaloes. And in the conference as well, he's in the top ten in scoring in the conference. But again, every year since he has come to Canyon has improved his game. When he first came, it was, okay, he's an excellent three-point shooter. Makes he's, them both. He's turned into an all-around outstanding player. Yeah. He was solid. You just didn't know what his game was when Grant and Murray were here because he played a different role. It's a nice finger roll by Freelo. Lewis Wilson <laughs> trying to coach his team up in the final minute of the game. Fouls called against Fuller. That's going to be his fourth. Tucson at the line again. Earlier this half, Tucson passed Jordan Evans for sixth spot on the WT career three-point list. Yeah, there's going to be some good things that Coach Wilson can take out of this uh, loss, what will end up being a loss most likely. His team has fought hard. Tucson knocks them both down. He has 21, his career high 27 earlier this year against Midwestern. Buffs get the rebound. The Patriots call off the dogs. And this how 16 and 2 sound. This one's going to go to the Buffaloes. They're going to improve their record to 16 and 2, 3 and 1 in Lone Star Conference play. UT Tyler falls to 9 and 2, 1 and 1 in Lone Star Conference play. Let's take a timeout. We'll come back with our post game wrap. 79 67, our final score. Buffaloes win it. You're watching Buffalo Basketball on the LSC Digital Network. on mornings and Whataburger is built on burgers mornings burgers morning burgers hmm yeah all right good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast topped with breakfast the limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger welcome to Shimon Dental Group where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shimon Dillon Group for your appointment today. Bud Light, proudly brewed. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Walk on athlete. 
They train long. Put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. With a taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Days are built on mornings, and Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings, burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm, yeah, all right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast, topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day we're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading-edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shimon Dillon Group for your appointment today. Bud Light, proudly brewed. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company.
this is a walk-on athlete. They train long and put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day. For the taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons. We live for this. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center where West Texas A&M has just dealt UT Tyler. A 79-67 defeat here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon in Canyon, Texas. Game delayed a little bit as two of the officials had travel difficulty getting the Texas panhandle. But once they got here, we had a game that it's lived up wait. to its advanced billing. It was worth the wait for sure. And a when you go back to the women's game, it was a doubleheader sweep for West Texas A&M, a great day to be a buff and a lady buff. Let's take a look at the team stats for this afternoon's game. Again, the buffs win at 79-67. You see from the field, UT Tyler shooting 30 per, excuse me, 41%, 19 of 46. The buffs 49% of at 28 of 57. Three pointers. Neither team really yeah. had the hot hand outside. UT Tyler four of thirteen for thirty percent. The Buffs five of eighteen for twenty-seven percent. UT Tyler hung around forever and stayed in this ball game by being aggressive and going to the line. They were twenty-five of twenty-eight, eighty-nine percent from the free throw line. The Buffs eighteen of twenty-five. That's seventy-two percent. Buffs out rebound. The Patriots thirty-five to twenty-eight. And both teams committed 18 turnovers. Points off turnovers, the Patriots have 15 to the Buffs, 14. The Buffs and the Patriots, very even points in the paint, 30 for WT, 28 for UT Tyler. But the Buffs with 10 offensive rebounds get 10 second chance points, just two for UT Tyler. Fast break points was the same, 16 to 15 in favor of WT, the Buffs' largest lead, 14 at the six-minute mark of the second half. UT Tyler scored the first bucket of the game, and that was their only lead. But, Lucas, we saw a game that we thought originally was going to be up and down the floor. It turned into a half-court game. We had some fluidity in the second half, but for the most part, it was, again, an example of the Buffs' defense yeah. just preventing easy buckets. It was the Buffs' defense. It was the Buffs' depth because they relied on a lot of different guys today. Uh, big big minutes for Parker Nielsen, big minutes uh, for Jesse Aweezy, obviously. Uh, even guys like Torian Harris who came in off the bench and, and provided some good minutes, and they had to do the job uh, team-wise uh, defensively, help defense, uh, blocking out and rebounding. They continue to out-rebound teams that are much bigger, sometimes more athletic than the, what the Buffs are. Um, Addison Wallace, another player that uh, provided some good minutes as well. So Buffs get the win, and, you know, we're, we're getting used to it now this year. In the past, a lot of threes. It was like, hey, we're going to have to make ten threes. Well, you don't have to do that this season, and you still win. Kevon Booker plays just 12 minutes, limited, had three block shots during that time, but we hope that uh, he can make a quick recovery and be ready to go this Thursday when the Buffs go down to St. Edwards. And we're about to be joined by the head coach of the Buffaloes, Tom Brown, as the Buffaloes run their record to 16-2 and two on the season, 3-1 and one in Lone Star Conference play. And, Coach, first, congratulations on the win. It, it seems like this year, as opposed to years past, there's not just one – box at the Buffs check and they do it they shoot threes outstanding and they win the game this year some years you shoot well outside some games some games you're rebounding exceptionally well today you just did a great job of keeping UT Tyler from hitting easy shots yeah our defense, defense defense was pretty good what did we hold them to in the first half it was uh, 29 points and you know second half they got going up and down a little bit they had to press and try to get back into it so we got a few easy buckets and they got a few buckets, but you know, there's there's more. We've there's not as many possessions, yeah. and so you got to really value the basketball. And we had a few turnovers that were we've got to clean those those things up. But wow, what an effort by our guys coming in off the bench today, and and Larry Wise, and you know Zach Toussaint was who was really banged up. I didn't even know if he was going to play today, 
but he had a great effort as well. And, you know, you feel bad for Kavan because he was a defensive force there in the first half. But then you got a, a guy like Jesse Awezi who, you know, he'll make some mistakes. And you might not notice it. He might be, he's got out of position sometimes, but he can really make up for it. He's got a lot of bounce to his game, and, and he's just going to keep developing and getting better and better. And then, you know, a couple guys that haven't played much this year were probably the difference in the game, and that's, you know, Torian Harris and, and uh, Parker Nielsen. Those two guys have had great practices, and, you know, like I said before, I say this a lot, we've got a really pretty good team, and it's hard to get on the floor sometime. But those two guys were ready, and that's where I'm really proud of those two guys is, is they were ready to go, and they really affected the game. And, you know, Torian had, some, Torian had a little bit, played a little bit more in the second half, but Parker played really well, I thought, in the first half and, you know, was aggressive, went and got a dunk and some, you know, just it was a great effort, great team effort. You know, that's, that's you know, Division Two basketball right there is guys stepping up and, you know, guys that, uh, that like to be around each other. And I think that's what we have in this team is, is, is we have some really good chemistry and it's hopefully starting to develop. You know, we didn't have Julius this weekend. You know, who knows if we'll have them next weekend or not. But you, you've got to go with who you have on the floor. And our guys uh, showed me a little something today. Well, it, the thing that we have noticed as the season has progressed, and you've mentioned it by naming names, is that this team has depth. And with the, uh, the system that you run, you're not pigeonholed into being a four or being a five or something like that. Everybody plays everywhere. So you can come in and substitute pretty freely. And the drop-off when you go to the bench is very minimal, if at all. Yeah, it was, you know, it's, let, let, you said it, and I think I might have said it too, but uh, Torian, you know, what a great game. And you're going to have Cameron on here in a little bit, and, you know, boy, did he, he just plays so hard. And he, and he makes some mistakes, don't get me wrong, and he's not, you know, he's not a lights-out shooter, but he can shoot it when he's open. And that, that, there's a kid that wanted to come to WT, and, you know, that's what that's what's pretty special about someone like him or, or Zach Tucson. Hey, I want to go to WT. And that's those are the guys that you want. You want guys that want to be here and be a part of the program. And, you know, same thing with Dalen. Dalen Williams, local kid, didn't have probably have his, his best game tonight. But, you know, he's he's ready to go, and he is so supportive of everybody else and just a, a consummate team player. And when you have guys that are on the bench that are team guys and they're helping us, everybody else and they bring great energy and uh I, i'm not going to say culture but they're they're there for the other guys whether they're playing a role in scout team or they're going out to lunch or something like that and there there's no animosity you know it's it's a lot of fun and that's what we have even if we flipped it around and our team was you know what are we right now i don't even know but 16 and two. if we were two and yeah two and 16 it would still have a great group of guys and I might not have a job here, but we'd still have a great group of guys. Well, one of one of the things that Lucas and I have commented on, you know, a week or so ago, ESPN football analyst Kirk Herbstreit made the comment that there are some kids that don't play their sport for the love of the game. But we see so many kids that it's obvious mm-hmm. on the Buffaloes they love playing basketball. Yeah, I think I think that's true. You know, when we go watch players too, and you can kind of tell some guys that are just there playing and. You know, there's some guys that we've passed on in recruiting that are pretty good players, but I don't know if they have that, you know, the the desire or the love for the game. Maybe that some others. I, I'll take a player that's maybe not as talented but that wants to be here, you know, or anywhere at your school. I think that's so important in the recruiting process. And, you know, we got a couple really good ones coming in next year too, so very excited about that. Um, I think the, the Buffaloes are in pretty good hands here right now, and, we only have, what do we have, two two juniors? Yeah. The rest yeah, are freshmen and sophomores, so, you know, let's, you let's, take, keep, let's keep it going, Kent. You take advantage of the fact that last year was almost a practice year because the kids didn't lose their year. Now, you lost a lot of players, but guys like Cameron and Zach, and they, they get their year back, and it's, it's right. paying off. Now, this week you, uh, you get to go see our good friends down in Austin at St. Edwards and St. Mary's. They're not in COVID, are they? <laughs> they may be by then. <laughs> we got to find that but out. That is that is a heated rivalry and, and one that will be fun. Yeah, it's always good to see Coach Cook. Um, you know, it's we've got, like you said, St. Ed's first and then St. Mary's. And St. Mary's, I think, is a very talented team. Uh, St. Ed's is a very, very good team as well, but they haven't, 
Uh, I don't think their record indicates that, but they they've got a. They're going to be tough. They're always ready when the buffs are on. They're, I, I don't know why they get up for us. They should be getting up for Eastern and and Lubbock, not not the, not your Buffaloes. But wow, what a game by Larry! Twenty-seven points, twelve fouls drawn. Yeah, that you know that shows how he played. Right. That's that's pretty impressive. I mean, he is, and he played. He logged a lot of minutes. You know, yeah. thirty-five might probably be a, a few minutes too many, but he had to do it tonight. And you know, what what a player. Well, we appreciate you stopping by. Good luck this week on the road. Safe travels hey, thanks, and congratulations Kevin. on another win. We're going to welcome on Cameron Bell here as he comes in to join us. Cameron, the <laughs> it says freshman from Edmond, Oklahoma, but it seems like you've been around three or four years already. I know it hasn't been quite that long, but uh, Cameron, 5'10", freshman, last year doesn't count, from Edmond, Oklahoma, comes off the bench. You know, everyone talks about, well, he's a role player or you have a role, but your role is so many things. You're not just a point guard. You know, in, in the Buffs offense, a one isn't just a one. You'll play the four, you'll play the three, the, the whatever. Yeah. And when you look at the box score, people go down to say, well, who had a great game? And they see, well, Cameron was 0 of 3, you know, but three rebounds, but plus 17. Mm -hmm on the plus minus is indicative of the way you play. Uh, Lucas made the comment during the game that um, you just mess things up for the opponents. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about today, because this was a very good Tyler team. Yeah, uh, Tyler was a very good team. Um, you know, down the stretch, I know they're playing real aggressive, and, you know, they're, uh, like, when me running through screens, like, I mean, that's like a thing I know. Like, most people are not going to set screens on the handoff. So, if I'm running in them, they're going to run me over. So, I know I can get that. And then You spend um, a lot of time on the floor. Yeah, I do. But it doesn't it doesn't bother me any. Uh, but main thing, I just try to help the team win, really. I do anything possible. I really don't care about stats and things like that. I just want the wins. Well, so. you know, as you, I'll say get older, but I don't mean in years. I mean in basketball years. You, you start off, you come off the bench. You, You'll be in the starting lineup at some point because your play mm -hmm. is going to make it to where Tom and Chris and Quincy have to put you on the floor yeah. all the time. Now, I have heard twice from two coaches today about the recruiting process with you and how you wanted to be a Buffalo mm -hmm. and how you would go on recruiting trips to other schools and while you were either there or coming back, calling, saying, hey, I'm here, but, man, I want to be with you guys. Why what is it about WT that attracted a kid that's in so many Oklahoma schools' backyards? Uh, I think it was just uh, the way the coaches approached me. Like They started recruiting me my sophomore year. And I'm not going to ask you to say David Chavlovic is why I wanted uh, no. to come here. <laughs> no, it's just uh, I just seen the way Coach Brown had his system. You know, he, like, you know, spaced the floor. He's like, he lets his guys play, and the coaches were, like, were real with me, like, up front. And they cared about like each player, and they want to see like player development. You don't see that in many coaches nowadays, and I really just appreciate them for everything they do for me. And it's amazing the chemistry of this program. I'm not going to say this team, but this program, because last year the chemistry was incredible. Yes. You lose four starters off that team. You bring in Jesse and Larry and Dalen, and I'm going to not name everyone that comes in. And it's just as good, if not better, watching you guys off the floor, watching you guys on the bench, watching you guys practice. This is a team that loves each other. Yes, sir. Um, I think last year, I think uh, after we took that loss in the National Championship game, I think we just had to have, like, a different focus coming into this year. I think we had to regroup more, you know, hang out more outside the, outside the gym. You know, we all hang out, go do things together. And we're all like, you know, staying connected and things like that. So I think that helps out a lot playing on the floor because like we we starting to know each other. We starting to know what uh, every player does. So I think that helps out like knowing where to get our players at in the right position for them to score or make the right pass or things like that. So well, Cameron, today you had three rebounds, two on the offensive end, one assist, one steal, plus 17 in the plus minus. Congratulations, mostly congratulations on another win, yes, 16 and two, three and one in conference play and. Yes, Tough road trip coming up. Yeah, we'll be ready for it. <laughs> well, we'll wish you safe travels. Thanks right. for joining us. We'll let you go uh, have your dinner now. All right, thank you. And uh, good luck this week. Thank you. We're going to take a quick time out. When we come back, I'll break down the individual stats. You're watching WT Basketball on the LSC Digital Network. 
J. Ferg Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guide you every step of the way. That is the J. Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call J. Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are J. Ferg Roofing. We are more. Welcome back to the First United Bank Center. Let's take a look at the final individual stats. For UT Tyler, Milan Sabo had eight points, four rebounds, one assist. Jackson Edelmayer had five points, one rebound, and an assist. Micah Fuller with eight points, three rebounds, two steals. Patrick Samora, four points, one rebound. Solomon Thomas, ten points, one rebound, one assist. Isan Wiley with 10 points, 6 rebounds, 2 assists, and 2 block shots. Zaire Mateen with 11 points, 2 rebounds, 1 assist, a turn, a steal, and a block shot. Finn Fluta, 2 points, 2 rebounds. Paul Joku with 7 points, 5 rebounds, 1 steal. Kyle Freelo with 2 points. And Trey Davis came off the bench to play three and a half minutes. As a team, 19 of 46 from the floor, four three-pointers, 25 of 28 from the line, 28 free throws, and 18 turnovers. For the Buffaloes, Kevon Booker in limited action as he left after 12 minutes with what appears to be a rolled ankle. Two points, four rebounds, one assist, and three block shots. Zach Toussaint, 22 points, one rebound, one assist. Hayden Blankley with 10 points, seven boards, two assists. Addison Wallace with four points, one rebound, two assists. Larry Wise with a a game and career high 27 points, eight rebounds, six assists, and he drew 12 fouls. Cameron Bell, who we just visited with, had three rebounds, one assist, a steal. Jesse Oweezy with eight points, five rebounds, one assist, and two steals. Parker Nielsen, six points, two rebounds, one steal. Dalen Williams had one rebound. Torian Harris had one rebound and a steal. And Jonas Carlisle played one minute, 45 seconds. As a team, the Buffs, 28 of 57. They were 5 of 18 from the three-point arc, 18 of 25 from the line. They had 35 rebounds, 79 points and 18 turnovers. Buff's biggest lead was 14 at the six-minute mark of the second. UT Tyler led by two in the first 30 seconds of the game. We had one lead change. This game was tied twice, and the Buffs dominated on the board, not necessarily on the stats, leading for 38 minutes and 33 seconds. Well, that's going to wrap it up here from the First United Bank Center. Want to give out a special shout to our director, Jacob Griffin, our Thunder Vision camera crew, Zale Kamenkow, Kaysen Johnson, Emma McReynolds, Daniel Kalunga. For my broadcast partner, Lucas Kinsey, I'm Kent Johnson, thanking you for spending your Saturday afternoon watching Buff and Lady Buff basketball. Lady Buffs knock off UT Tyler 62-53 to to run their record 4-0 and in conference play. The Buffs. Knock off the Patriots 79-67 to go to 16-2 and overall. Buffs are on the road next week. We'll be back at it in two weeks when Angelo State and UT Permian Basin come to town. Until then, good night, everybody.